we're about counting down into February. Yes, January is almost over. The longest month of the year, as people like to say. Anyways, welcome to the breakfast. We have a lot in store for you. But first, my name is Romer Paulson. And my name is Ian. But I must say that this January is the fastest January I've ever known. Mm -hmm. uh, Januarys have always had January, and then January full marks. January <laughs> Very long. The but longest now, month. This January is quite short, and I don't know why. I'm, I'm try, trying to wrap my head around what it is. This January is supposed to be the, the longest of all the Januarys I've experienced because, <laughs> because of the economy. <laughs> yes, but, but it just happened that it was so fast, and everybody's talking about the fact that it was so fast. Yeah. Uh, we thank God for small mercies. Mm -hmm. We do hope that. Uh, as fast as it is, that's how the pockets will be replenished. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen. I mean, we all need that mm. right now. We need saving. Mm. But yes. Anyways, we'll be looking at what the national dailies are saying, as well as some hot topics. But, and also some top trending stories. But first, let's take our quotes of the day. The great myth of our times is that technology is communication, and that is by Lee B. Larson, who's a composer. The great yes. myth of our times is that technology is communication. So a lot of time we think... That's really deep. That's very really deep. deep. Very, very that's a very, deep. That's, I think that's one of our deepest yeah, very, quotes very on technology. Deep. You know, technology, we just feel, okay, because we can talk to another person, that's communication, and it's good enough. Uh, nothing beats physical contact, nothing beats true friends, nothing beats uh, physical friends that you can laugh with, cry with and all mm -hmm. that and know that they are just there for you. Yeah. You could have like a million or five million likes or a hundred million likes mm -hmm. and some of the people that commit suicide are high profile people true. with so many likes. True. So imagine if they had half of that number as true friends mm -hmm. that really like them, that really love them. I'm sure they will never have to go through whatever they go through. Yeah. So I communication think, gives us, it, it bridges the gap, but it's not really the communication, oh, technology, technology sorry. Yeah. It's not really the communication that we need to survive and be human as we should be. Yeah. It's really deep. Yeah, it's, it's quite a very deep quote because when I saw that, I was just like, oh, wow, that's quite profound mm -hmm. because it's so true. Most times we think, te like, don't get me wrong, technology is good. Technology is what has, you know, brought us. In fact, the reason why we're here right now and people are watching us on TV, um, on even online as well, is technology. So technology has its perks. But then it's when you start to think that that's all that there is. Mm -hmm. That's the only that's the only way you can communicate with other people. But that's not it. There's something wholesome about having someone next to you. You mm -hmm. can see their eyes properly. You can see their body language. You can tell how they feel about you. And it just, it just makes you happy and glad that you have these people in your corner. So technology is great for you to communicate, but that's not all that there is to communication. And what are <coughs> what the, the, the person who wrote this quote is saying, it's just a myth that you think technology is, you know, I mean, that. as you grow older, you find out that the communication you get through technology does not really do you any good. When you get older and all your children, for instance, are grown up and you're left alone and they gave you a phone, every once in a while they call you and they never get to come home mm. after we are, we are communicating with him. Yeah. It, it, it just depresses you and yeah. you know that you spent your youth that you have spent building relationships physical mm -hmm. relationships in just using technology and thinking that that is communication yeah. communication has to do with the physical and somewhat spiritual yeah. <laughs> let me say so well, something mm -hmm. deeper than just what you're seeing mm -hmm. outside and if we're spending time not building that kind of communication then technology will take away the chunk of the real communication that we that, need yeah. uh, in the later years. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's really about 
spending moments mm -hmm. or, or rather creating moments with the people that you love. Yeah. And when you're creating moments, most times you really can't have that wholesome moment when you're doing it over the phone mm -hmm. or over a laptop or something. But when someone is there, you're creating those awesome moments that you would cherish forever. And like you said, there are people who commit suicide, mm -hmm. but they have mm -hmm. all the likes, they have DMs, they have mm -hmm. all the messaging. Mm -hmm. And obviously they are haters and there are still people that say, oh, well done, champ, you're doing so well. But sometimes it's never really enough because you want that whole, and the key is the wholesome moments with people. Well, you see, even Ch I think China or so is developing an app, or they have already developed an app where you can kiss, you know, from far. <laughs> you know, you atta attach I'm a device. I'm rolling my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you attach a device to your phone and you're doing a, a, a video call and something simulates it, and you, you're kissing over the phone. I'm like, what is that? That's How does that real. even work? I mean, technology is good, but please. Yeah, but okay, so our uh, hot topic today is about technology, where uh, uh, the, the, the security people are saying that lack of gadgets is making them not able to track down criminals and do what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I just asked myself when I saw the topic, uh, you know, what happened when we had no tracking devices? Mm -hmm. Were the police not investigating and arresting people? And, mm -hmm. Well, we'll have an expert to talk about that, but let's go to the top trending. You All take right. So our first top trending today is Rivers Police Rescue One Day Old Baby mm -hmm. from Child Traffickers. The operatives of the River State Police have killed a notorious sea pirate, cultist, and gun runner, John Togo, who allegedly terror terrorized the coastal communities along Boni Port Harcourt waterways. The commissioner of police in the state, Mr. Olatunji Disu, said the suspect, Togo II, was a member of the dreaded Iceland cult, adding that he reigned terror on residents of the state sea travelers. Disu noted that the police operatives in collaboration with the C4I intelligence unit and the Bokiri police division while acting on credible intelligence had stormed the camp of the criminal gang. He noted that on sighting the police, the group had opened fire, adding that the kingpin was brought down in the process. Disu disclosed that before Togo's death, he operated an illegal oil bunkering camps engaged in armed trafficking, killings and robberies. According to him, John Togo's criminal career began in the Borikiri area of Port Harcourt, where he initially engaged in court-related activities, gradually graduated from petty crimes, and evolved into a full-fledged kidnapper and sea pirate, assembling a gang of ruthless criminals along the way. He adopted the alias of ex-militant John Togo, who had been killed in July 2011, and he and his gang gained notoriety in 2021 due to their involvement in a series of sea piracy and kidnappings, which ignited the NSAS, NC pirates, NC piracy protests and campaigns that reverberated throughout Bunny Island in January 2021. He targeted commercial boats, mercilessly killing drivers and throwing passengers into the sea as he stole the vessels. In one such encounter on the 17th of July 2023, Togo engaged security forces in a shootout, compelling them to abandon their gunboat. In another development, Disu said police rescued a day-old baby and apprehended two suspects involved in a case of human trafficking. Disu hinted that in the incident happened on Monday, the 22nd of January 2024, when some diligent officers from the C4I intelligence unit of the command conducted a routine stop and search operation along the Iguruta Eneka Road. The CP said the officers intercepted one Daniel Destiny Onyegbulem, a 28-year-old male from Umoye in HL local government area, and Uzo Dima Eze, also known as Thank God, a 33-year-old male from Omanwa, Ikwere local government area of the state. Daniel allegedly disclosed that he had been contacted by a woman <coughs> known as Madame Destiny, Mama Destiny, a pastry vendor in his locality who enlisted his services to transport the sack bag containing the baby to Eneka Junction with instructions to await further contact from an associate who will receive the bag in exchange for the payment of 10,000 Naira. Hmm. Yeah. 10,000 Naira. I mean, first things first, there is no amount of money that is worth any life. And then how do you kidnap a day-old baby or traffic a day-old baby and you're selling or you're exchanging for 10,000 naira? 
My brother is, um, is of the NDLEA and he sent a video on the family group uh, not too long ago where uh, there were like so many sacks and guess what? Inside those sacks were children. Oh my goodness. Some of them maybe 10, 9, some of them toddlers and all that. They were inside sacks that were tied at How the top. breathing? I just wonder and they were trying to traffic these people and i was i was just thinking how, how the thought process of these people when they do things they do and when they are trafficking these people it's not as if all of them are going to end up in forced labor some of them might end up in one ritualist altar and mm -hmm. all that and they don't just care and you're selling someone for 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 they basically 10, sold their you're, souls you, i i just don't know Kudos to the, to the police that yeah. they were able to do this. And I hope that more of these uh, terrible people will always be apprehended like this. I don't know why this keeps happening. But well, thank God for them. Yeah, thank God for them. The second uh, top trending story is that EFCC arranged impeached Ogun Speaker Luomo to others. The impeached Speaker of the Ogun State House of Assembly, Olakunle Oluomo, Alongside two other principal career, uh, career officers of the assembly, Dio Samuel and Adeyemo Adediji, were on Monday arraigned before a federal high court sitting in Okemoson, Abiokuta, the capital of the state. Olomo and the duo were dragged before the court by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission over alleged misappropriation of public funds running into 2.5 billion naira. Olomo allegedly committed this financial fraud while he was the Speaker of the House of Assembly in 2022. The former Speaker was last week removed by 18 out of the 26 lawmakers over allegations bordering on financial misappropriation, high-handedness, gross misconduct, arrogance, poor leadership style, lack of focus and transparency, and pitching themselves against themselves or pitching members against themselves. Olomo has, however, described his removal as illegal saying that he had already instituted a suit at the state high court to challenge his impeachment. On Monday, shortly after the trial entered the dock, the court discovered that the counsel for the anti-graft agency could not make it to the court. The presiding judge, Justice Agatha Okeke, however, adjourned the case to February 29 and March 1. The EFCC had, in September 2022, arrested and later arraigned Oluomo for allegedly diverting 2.5 billion belonging to the Assembly. Oluomo was arraigned alongside the Clerk of the House, Taiwo Adeyemo, and the Director of Finance, Oladayo Samuel. Anti-graft agency had the accused speaker and others forging receipts and signatures to divert billions of naira from the Legislative House. The were thereafter granted bail after pleading not guilty even as they were asked to submit their travel documents at the court. Okay, he's been arranged. <laughs> um, just on a lighter mode, um, mm. the case was adjourned to February, February 29. 29. You know, they are making use of the extra day. Yeah, <laughs> it's a leap year. year. Uh, <laughs> so if they had adjourned it last year, it couldn't have reached 29. <laughs> I just saw that. Okay, but you know, uh, this person has been arranged. Sometimes when I'm not saying this is what happened, but sometimes when the assembly members say someone is high-handed, he is uh, non-cooperative with mm -hmm. the people, you just know that the money is not changing hands. It's not, yes, it's not yeah, flowing. It's not flowing. So this 2.5, I wonder if he, he took really? the money himself mm -hmm. or he really took it. Maybe there was money that was misappropriated. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe there is also a percentage that got to the other people and it was not big enough. We'll mm -hmm. find out. I hope that whatever it is, he speaks out the truth mm -hmm. and we find out where the money is. And but EFCC even like investigates more. Well, that's their job to investigate mm -hmm. and um, be sure of what exactly happened. Because like you said, most times it's always... You know when someone Since 2022, comes in, and now it's because he has been removed by other members of the assembly mm -hmm. that EFCC has stepped in again. Mm -hmm. What were they doing since then? So that's what I'm saying. They, they have to do their due diligence. They can't just arraign him because of suspicion or because some, some members came out to say these things. They need to investigate to see what exactly happened. Because most times, you know when someone comes into power or any leadership role, 
um, when you're not doing the bidding of the people, they, they start to mm -hmm. look for ways to bring you down. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying you're innocent because, you know, they even say who, who must come with equity must come with clean hands. Mm -hmm. So when you don't have those clean hands, they look for something to just use to indict you. So it's possible that there's been some form of it's money. Possible. Yes, it's possible that something had happened and then they just use that to rope, in, rope him in and just say, oh, this is what he has done, um, poor leadership style, um, you know, misappropriation of funds and all of that. But yes, let's just see how the story develops. It's also possible he was ruling with impunity and mm -hmm. all they were saying was true. Well, yes. we are going to find out. But the thing that I'm worried about is that we should stop defining things according to how we like them in Nigeria. Yes. Whatever is the definition should be kept as the definition and you follow through. Mm -hmm. Impeachment means accusation. That's all. But here, once you hear impeachment, the person has been removed. Mm. Impeachment is you're accusing someone that he did something. So if he has done something and you're accusing him, take him to court, find him guilty, and then remove him. You don't remove him before you find him guilty, guilty. or not guilty. Yeah. So what if he's not guilty? And you've what already happens? removed you bring him. him you reinstate him. So I, I don't know. So the the guy will now win the case if that is if mm -hmm. he's found uh, not, not guilty. guilty. He will win the case. He will get all his entitlements as the person who was the speaker. If he was paid uh, double of what he's supposed to be paid as a member, he, you will still have to pay him because mm -hmm. you removed him illegally. Yeah. So we should follow due process. due process. We should define words the way they are. Impeachment is not removal. It should never lead to removal. Donald Trump was impeached. Even I was just as about a president. to say that as well. Impeachment is, okay, he had some, some case to answer. So he answered it. And he was still president. But here, once you hear... He has been impeached. Mm. That means he has been removed. We're done. We need to know what the terminologies are and use them appropriately. Right. All right, to so our final top training story, we have federal government to inaugurate 37 member committee on the new national w minimum wage. The federal government has assembled a 37 person committee tasked with proposing a new national minimum wage on Tuesday, January 30. At the Council Chamber Presidential Villa State House, Abuja, the spokesperson for the Office of the Secretary to the State to the Governor to the Government rather of the Federation, Shegun Imokyosen, disclosed this in a statement. The existing minimum wage set at thirty thousand naira per month was approved in 2019, following the passage of the minimum wage bill by the National Assembly. The labor unions demanded an increase on the 30,000 Naira minimum wage, citing rising inflation and the Naira's depreciation. President Bola Tinubu, after his swearing in to office, promised that his administration would provide a living wage for Nigerian workers because the existing national minimum wage was not enough, in quotes. The committee to be is to be inaugurated on Tuesday, January 30, which is today boast a diverse list of members, including representatives from the federal and state government, the private sector and organized labor. The former head of civil service of the Federation, Buka Aji, will chair the group tasked with navigating the complex and often contentious issues of the minimum wage. Members are urged to arrive early to process their clearance at the security gate and to be seated in the council chamber by 11.30 a.m. In addition, a shuttle bus will be available at the pilot gate to transport attendees to the venue. Also, members of the committee should contact the head of sec secretariat, Chiadi Adiogu, director compensation in the National Salaries, Incomes and Wages Commission for information. Well... I'm, I'm waiting to see what happens here. 37 members. That's fine. So, like, why do we need 37 members to just discuss what the minimum wage will be? 37 members. They're talking about minimum wage. and First, you're already going to be paying these people money. Like, there's money allocated for these things. Mm -hmm. All the people that are going to become, aside the 37 members, even people that might come there would get something mm -hmm. or another. Then now, how much, I'm not sure it's going to be less than, I don't know, whatever amount. But those monies five that you're, I was about to even say 1 million. Five I was trying million to be. Times 37. And those monies can actually be used for a better cause. We're talking about minimum wage. Why not add it to the budget of the, you know, amount you want to pay uh, people? They'll, they'll, some governors will be giving 500 naira to pregnant women. Yeah, we've seen that in the last administration. But, you know, <clears throat> if things are working, if the system is working, we don't need committees upon committees. They keep setting up committees mm -hmm. and all that. So 
whatever happens to the Ministry of Labor and Productivity, for instance, having a, a dialogue with the labor. Labor yeah. has a plan. The labor has demands and they have all this worked out and they have formed their own committee to mm -hmm. argue for uh, this minimum wage mm -hmm. and all that. What is the Ministry of Labor doing, Labor and Productivity? What's uh, the relevant ministries doing? Mm -hmm. These 37 people, where are they coming from? Are well, they paying them as, as people that mm -hmm. are part of the committee or they are doing that as part of their job? Because if it's from the ministry, uh, that is yeah. involved, then you don't have to, you don't need to, to pay, pay them, them extra. Even if you are giving them some something, it some wouldn't be as much area, as some people who mm -hmm. are coming from outside to do this. But bottom line is I we think, like committees too much. <laughs> I think in their defense, because of the, the, the um, sphere that I saw of people that are coming, maybe in their defense, they want it to be as holistic as possible in the sense that they want people from different walks of life different sectors so it's not just you know people from the government or it's not just people from the organized private sector so they want everybody just for inclusion why are you looking at me like that <laughs> 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 I'm what just saying, I'm trying to, I'm trying yeah, to yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm so maybe at that's you. what it is, but still, you know, there are times like, for instance, if you have to do jury service, I think that's what it's called, mm -hmm. um, you have to do that for free. For instance, in America, it's mm -hmm. like part As, of your, part of your civic e duties. E exactly. So except, except that's what this is here, like that's what's happening in here. Nigeria. To, Don't wait, even think it. Hold on. Don't even think it. Don't I'm think talking it. about. Don't think Let it. Me land. Don't think it. Land where? Where are you <laughs> landing? There's no place. There's no helipad. There's no <laughs> airport I'm for you to. I'm, don't I'm, land. Wait, hold on. I'm saying maybe that's the case for these 37 members. It is they not. <laughs> it is not. So I, don't even use a maybe. It's not. It's, it's not. They will be paid. They will be given money to do this. Money they're not volunteering. They're else. not volunteering. They are going to be paid, even if they're not calling it pay. They will tell get, you get that, okay, something. they are coming to Abuja to stay somewhere and then... Do you understand you, logistics? You, everything. So, welfare. So oh. don't, don't even think about it. it. They will be paid. But the thing is, even if they are paid, what kind of amount they are going to be paid, I hope the committee will have recommendations that will be followed. And when they follow these recommendations, then we won't find the problems we are finding. But I think a basic and fundamental question that should have been asked is why do people even need this minimum wage to go up? Because I, as I always say, if everything is working, a lot of people will not be complaining yes. about what they're earning. If, every, if everything that I'm paying for can go under what I'm earning, then that's fine. Even if the minimum wage is 20,000 naira, as long as I can afford every other thing. Whatever they were paying you in January last year, for instance, hmm. if they're still paying you that, or even double of it, the transportation, hmm. <coughs> whether you have a car or not, the transportation will take like half of that money. Mm -hmm. You've not talked about if you have responsibilities. Yeah. Everybody has responsibilities. Even the very irresponsible people have a lot of girlfriends. You have to eat They this. have a lot of boyfriends. <laughs> they have a lot of people that help them to do the irresponsible things. So you still need to spend. So you find out what you were earning in January, even last year. It's not even it's enough. Not, it's not, double of that is not even enough now. Yeah, to, I know the use. NLC is proposing about 200,000 naira, which I'm not sure the government will, you know, go there. But even 200,000 naira is 200,000 naira enough the thing is, if to you propose, live in Nigeria right now. Even if you now, propose 500,000 naira, the landlords are listening. The people selling at the street corners are listening. Once it is done, they up their price. The inflation goes up. Whatever what law, whatever now? law works everywhere that you know remove money from society. There's no inflation, or when there is a lot of things. Whatever law they've been using to fight inflation does not work in Nigeria. It doesn't seem to work. I may not be an economist, but everything they say, if you do this, inflation will stop. It doesn't stop. So you. Pumping more money by paying people more, mm -hmm. a, a section of the people anyway, because mm -hmm. it's not everybody that is working. Yeah. You pay them and the landlords are listening. So, l like I said... And they will tell you they, they buy their... The, the cement, even if the house the was rods, built the, in 1958... They will still increase it. They will still increase it. What they, all they need to do is the landlords come together and fabricate a gate, put in the street, it becomes an, an estate. estate. <laughs> and right. then the, the, landlord, the, the price goes up. Because hmm. they have tried 
to do security themselves. They have tried to get light themselves. They have tried to do a lot of mm -hmm. things themselves. That, that the government, government is supposed to, yeah. Good. So things will always happen like this. So why, why not just do the needful? And then gradually it is in the law that a civil servant gets pay uh, upgrade Mm -hmm. After a certain uh, number of years, yeah. you get your promotion after a certain number of years. Why not just follow that and make sure the things that are making people want more money are provided? As yeah. simple as that. Well, let's see what happens with the 37 member for the committee of the minimum wage. Anyways, we'll go on a quick break. Congratulations. <laughs> Political appointment. <laughs> Mm. We're not saying, but we're saying. <laughs> we'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning. But first, let's check out the weather. Stay with us. <laughs> 